Welcome to My Life, Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson, a journey into the deepest teachings of Torah and their application to our personal, emotional, and psychological lives. A good week. We continue our journey in the life-changing Sefer HaTanya. This program is made possible by Rina Lights LLC and is an honor and memory of Rabbi Yosef Halevi Weinberg Olav HaShalom, Rabbi Moshe Pinchas HaKoyen Katz Olav HaShalom, Rabbi Yael HaKoyen Khan Olav HaShalom. It's also in Schus merit of Rabbi Zev Yicheskel HaKoyen and Risha Katz Le'edich Yom and Bishan and Tevis for many long healthy years. So we're close to the end of chapter Yudalit, chapter 14 in Tanya. <coughs> Excuse me. And discussing the, the Shvua, the oath that each of us takes upon coming down to this world, as he said right in the beginning of Tanya. And he explained what is the reason for the double oath if you're not if you're a tzaddik, you're automatically not a rosh, and vice versa. So he began first by saying, because to be a tzaddik is not in the capacity of every person, as we learned at length earlier, to be a benini is in our capacity, not to be a rosh, to be a benini, but not a tzaddik. So if that's the case, so then why do we say the first half? We should just say, mashbine, say, alti rosh. So he says, because nevertheless, a person has to constantly has to designate time to attempt to, his best, to the best of his capacity. To seek advice for his soul. To develop a disgust for everything against God, anything evil. And then he continues, he gave examples for it, as we learned, how a person can envision using different contemplations, different methods, different, uh, different uh, meditations of how to despise everything that is negative to the best of your ability, including komine matam madanim kach chamas mole, that everything in this physical world, the physical pleasures, is like a, a pouch full of waste because all the pleasures are all temporary. And Chacham Reyes is and a wise person sees the outcome of them. That they, at the end of the day, they will all become refuse, waste, worm infested waste, as he says. Yosef and Lirke Veliyas Rima, for Ashpa. Okay? And the same thing, a person has to make the attempt as much as possible to take pleasure and joy in God. And how does a person do that? As we learned earlier as well, by meditating on the greatness of Ainsof, of the divine infinite. And that's the real key fo- focus here. Kefiyah Chalte. To the best of his ability. That's what the Tehit Sadik does. To do the best. And then he continued. So we learned earlier you can't become a Tzadik. So he says, even though you know a person knows that deep down, that he will never reach this level. The em islamite. It's the ultimate absolute truth. Ki'im bidimyenis. Except only bidimyenis. Dimyenis is a key word here. He doesn't say dimyenis shav, which, which would refer to something that's complete to delusion. Dimyenis means, different ways you could define it, means it's not absolutely real, but it's also not complete delusion. You could say it's a fond hope. It's an aspiration. And the, the Rebbe Rashab actually in Kuntur Seitz Chaim, chapter 7, emphasizes that. He says, mm-hmm. 
So it makes it clear we're not talking about a dimyan shav. Because that would be something that's completely delusional. And then, what's the purpose of the oath? You say, Tehid Sadiq, it's just a delusion. Obviously not. But by saying it's Dimyan, it means not Emes Lamite. He could have said it's not Emes, it's only Dimyan, dimyan Shav. Dimyan, dimyan Shav. He says not Emes Lamite. Now, if you remember the end of chapter 13, he also spoke about this. There's the Sadiq Emes Lamite, and there's the Emes by the Benini. On his level, it's Emes. So his attempt and his effort, bottom line, the effort for him to feel that the pleasures of this world are despicable, he's done the best of his ability. So he has fulfilled the oath to Hit Sadiq. So you can't say it's complete delusional. You say it's not emes lamite like a true Sadiq, because at the end of the day, as long as you have a nefesh habamis, it's not a Sadiq, because you have the temptations. But you have fulfilled the oath. So this is yet another vote of confidence in each of us, because again, people read this and say, you know what, I'll never, I, I, there's a glass ceiling, I can never become a Benini, a be, a, I can never become a Tzaddik. But as I've discussed in previous classes, the exact opposite, the Alter Rebbe is telling us what you could become, the great potential, Midas Kalodam, a Benini is a high level. Not being a Tzaddik is not something that is a failure, because you could never have become that, it's not your role. It's like someone's saying they want to become something they're totally not, it's not your personality type. So you have to see it actually as a positive, not as a negative. And yet at the same time, there is a standard like that. And there are individuals, Barat Sadikim. Barat Sadikim, there are people that God designated to be Sadikim. But furthermore, you have to attempt to be. Because then you can say, okay, fine. I can never be a Sadik. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my best to be a Bainani. And then work on being a Bainani, a full Bainani. But he's going further that the confidence in you is so strong that you can also attempt and do everything possible to become not just a Benini, but also as much as possible a Tzaddik uh, relative to you. What that means is, if you make Kefiyachote, your great effort to reject materialism, reject the pleasures of this world, as an end in themselves, of course, and second, to enjoy the pleasures of God, that's in your capacity. But at the same time, he's qualifying because he also wants us to know there is a level of a tzaddik. It's not for you to reach there. So yudeya benafshe, that you won't reach that level. Ba'amisla mite. Kim bedimyenis. So there is, that is dimyen. There is that dimyen. And that itself affects you. Kim bedimyenis. Hu yas eshaloi. Here again, another emphasis. Nevertheless, he does his part. The best of his ability, the kaim es ashvua shemashbiim tihid tzaddik, to fulfill the oath to be a tzaddik, the oath that you took before birth, and that's not just a theoretical thing, that impacts you because you are doing it. It's an effort. This is a real effort. Vashem yasa tev be'enov. And God will do what is good for his, for, for, in his eyes. Essentially emphasizing that's not your issue to deal with God. You have to deal with God created you the way you are. And you have to do, reach your highest potential, which is to be a Baini. And to heed Sadiq as much as you can in your capacity to be a Sadiq. Excellent. And God will do with his part. And that's not our issue. We don't have to worry about God's, God's issue. <clears throat> and whatever comes from that is not up to us if Hashem wants as we shall soon learn he can actually help and give you more strength and turn a person into a tzaddik or give him a, a, a nisham of a tzaddik as we shall learn shortly and if not you've still done your part and you don't have to worry about what God does in that context Okay. So that's where we reached. But now the Alter Rebbe went, goes further. That this effort to fulfill the oath is the next step. And this is also critical. Because here you can still argue that the two parts of the oath 
are not exactly the same. The, the second part, Alti Rosha, a person can reach because everyone has the capacity to be a Benini and not a Rosha. But here at Tzadik, you really can't reach the, the complete level of a Tzadik Emes Lamite. Yes, you're aspiring to it. You're doing whatever possible, and that has great value. But in somewhat, it's not exactly the same idea. So you're, it's like you're ultimately, your hands are tied because you can't fully become a tzaddik. So he's going to address and says, V'oid, now. V'oid. Not just from this Kavra's point of view, the person, his effort to be a tzaddik, but there's something that happens to the person that actually changes them as a result of, of fulfilling this part of the oath to eat tzaddik. To the point that he can actually reach that level. So here's what the Alter Rebbe says. For eight. In addition. Shahergel. Al kol dover. Shiltoin. That the habit. Rules over all. This is an expression from uh, Rabbein Yena and Shara Tshuva. Rabbein Yena, I believe it's in um, Shari Tshuva, I think. Pedic, um, yeah, Pedic Bay, section 30. That Hergel, I'll call Dover Shilton. That habit rules all. And then the Alter Rebbe adds another expression, Venasa Tevasheni. And this habit becomes second nature. That's from Shvili Amuna. Beis, uh, Dalad Beis. Nesiv Dalad, Shvil Beis. Okay. So what do we see from here? Something happens here. It's not just your effort to despise the negative and evil and to love God with pleasure as much as you can. There's this actual effect on the person. And what is that effect? Because when you do something repeatedly, hergel, consistently, a habit, it rules all. It rules. It has a power to rule to the point that it has the power to become second nature. So how does that apply to us? So he says like this, Ukshiyargil. Ukshiyargil limos, asara. Ukshiyargil limos, asara. Yenimus ktsas beemis. So it's not just your effort, which also has great value. We'll make you your habit to detest evil, evil meaning anything that's not godly anything of the material world as an end in itself, then the habit will cause it that you genuinely, genuinely will detest it. But so he's now using the word emes. Before he said it's not emes, it's, it's, but it, only dimyanus. Now he's running that it's emes because it affects you. In other words, bottom line, it will pierce your personality. So let's say hypothetically a person only fulfilled the first, the second half of the oath. Not to be a Russia, he's a Benini. But he does not make this extra effort to detest like a tzaddik does. He rejects it in thought, speech, and action. That's what a Benini does. But he doesn't detest it necessarily. He rejects it. So his thought, speech, and action is pure. But in his faculties, he's plus the animal soul is affecting him, but he doesn't detest it. So besides the first thing, he didn't make that effort, it also does not affect his personality. It only affects his thought, speech, and action. But if he makes an effort to detest, it has effect, psychological and actual practical effect that it may become second nature. It does affect the person. So you see here, a person is changing even beyond being a Baini, he's changing something. And now, just as he spoke in the negative, he also speaks in the positive. 
So he says like this. Ukshi Yargil, the Sameach Nafshi Bashem, same thing with Hergil. That he will, he does something, another habit that he develops. When he makes it his habit to rejoice with his soul in God, how? Through a steady, through a contemplation upon the greatness of God. So now he adds something more. The first part, the detesting, becomes second nature. But now when a person takes pleasure in God, which can be even more difficult for a person who's a bainini, because that's not his nature, is to take pleasure. Yes, he has pleasure in the divine, but his, but his faculty also has an animal soul at work. So now comes an additional element. This is yet another thing the Alter Rebbe adds. The awakening from below causes an awakening from above. It's a famous expression, Chesid is brought from Zayar. Chilik Beis, Kuflamed Hei Beis, 135b. And this now an additional thing happens. V'kulai haivu ulai. So it creates an Asus Adelayla, so now you've affected now also heaven. And now there, from heaven can, something can happen, an additional element, in addition to becoming your second nature. In addition to the effort you made, which is the effort we all have to make to be a tzaddik, now, perhaps, this will all cause everything that has happened here, your efforts below, a ruach, a spirit, will descend or pour down or uh, manifest upon him from on high. And what will happen? And he will merit to the spirit. Ruach from the root of a particular tzaddik will be impregnated into you. To generally worship God with joy, as the verse states, tzaddikim are joyous with God. And then, It'll be fulfilled in him in a fullest way. Be emes, hashvur shemazbiim shemazbiim tehi tzaddik, the oath that he took to be a tzaddik. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here, a lot of details, but with that he actually concludes the chapter. But let's discuss this and break it down. Firstly, let's just break down the structure here. So three things the Alter Rebbe generally says about Tehid Tzaddik. That even though it could be a Benini, that's Lal Tehid Rasha, you can't be a Tzaddik, but a person has to still make time and effort at this capacity to despise negative things and to embrace God with pleasure. That's number one. Number two, that itself, Oid, controls, has a control, like you said. Teva. Yargil, he said like this. He said the Lashem was a Hergel called Var Shilton. That the habit rules. And it could and Benasa Teva Sheni. And it becomes actually his nature. So it's had an actual impact on him, this effort. Which and then he spells out what that means. What does the effort do? That when he accustoms himself and makes it a habit to despise evil, to despise the negative, that causes him to, um, that, that becomes a second nature. 
It will actually be bemis. It won't be just an attempt. It will actually cause him to become something he despises. It's like a person who works on a diet. When he works long enough, he can actually lose an appetite for certain things. In the beginning, he's just forcing himself to reject certain foods. But then there comes a point where he's disgusted by it. You hear this all the time. Why? Because he's done it a long time enough that he's changed his personality. He's actually changed his nature. Teva Sheni. And this is vital because it's Teva. Remember that Midas called out the Midas Benini. But here, because of his effort, he's changed something. But that still doesn't make him a tzaddik in the full-fledged vers- version of it. So the Alter Rebbe continues. And Kishi Yargul Sameach Nafshi Bashem. So here you can learn several different ways how he's adding now. A third point. So the two points so far we've said is you have to make your attempt. Two, it actually affects you. The third point is what happens from above. Remember we said before that Hashem Yasa Yasa Hatev Be'enov. What happens from above when you do this? That also can, can play, comes into play. But it's interesting that he says it specifically by the second half, by the positive. Because you could argue that it's easier on your own to despise the negative and that should become second nature. Whereas to take pleasure in God to the point that that should change you, that may need to have more power from above. That's one way you can learn it. Another way you can learn this piece is, is no, that Hergel Nasa Teva applies to both. To despising the bad and to enjoying and pleasure in God. The more you get pleasure in God, the more you get used to it, the more it becomes part of you. And in addition, this hergal that you do, that in turn causes that Hashem should make and send you a ibur, impregnate within you, so to speak, the neshama of a tzaddik. But it's more likely that this last piece is talking about the simcha, because he says a tzaddik, and a tzaddik is simcha mitis. But nevertheless, a tzaddik also has full despise of the negative. So you could say that this third piece of the tzaddik entering into the person affects both aspects. But that's something you can learn either way. It doesn't change the, the actual understanding of it all. But let's, so we have three things here. Your effort, how it changes you, two. And number three, what happens above? And what happens above, we know an effort below stimulates something from above, and with that, Ulai, like he says, Kula Haivu Ulai, Kula Haivu Ulai, Yara Love Ruach Bemarim, that the Ruach from above will pour over him, manifest in him, and actually bring into him a tzaddik, a neshama of a tzaddik. But now we have to understand what means bringing a neshama of a tzaddik into a person who's not a tzaddik. We said earlier, Barasa Tzaddikim, Barasa Rashaim. A tzaddik is designated from above, a true tzaddik. Not, we're not talking about the effort. So how could a person have that? But from above, things just as the Ebishter can create a tzaddik, he could also include the neshama of the ruach of a tzaddik into a person who's not naturally a tzaddik. And there's different ways this, this can happen, I'll be Kabbalah. We all know the concept of Gilgal. Gilgal is the reincarnation of a neshama from one person to another person. I mean, there's different types of Gilgulim. So Bechina's Gilgul, you could have the neshama that hypothetically came from a different level into a person who was not, uh, not the same level. But in Kabbalah, there's also the concept of Ibur. So Ibur should not be misunderstood. This is not the Ibur that we usually talk about, the pregnancy of a nine months of a child in a mother's womb. In Kabbalah, there's a concept that there is the, there is the idea of some Shadisaba Bechina's Ibur that neshama should enter in a form of Ibur. So in the Kisvat Izal talks about this. And the basically the briefly what it means is that there are different ways since an Ashama has Nefesh Ruch Nashama Chai Yechida, the five levels. And every person is born in their particular way. But through different Aved that a person can do, what you can have is different Nashamas can enter different times. I'll give an example. In Kisra Rizal, it talks about Rabbi Yechel and Kohen Gadol, who after 80 years became a Tzduki. 
So it says, Rabbi Eliezer ben Derdaya, after 80 years, became a Baal Shuvah. And Kone Lama Bishachas, he cried out and he, uh, he earned his way to, 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 in one second, he owned his way to, to uh, Ilam Haba. So the Rizal asked the question, okay, fine, he earned his way, but to have an Ilam Haba, you also have to levush him. You have to have, he didn't do the mitzvahs. He didn't have all the years of work that acclimates you and allows you to receive the Gilead Lekus above. So he's allowed to enter. But it's like, imagine somebody who hasn't learned Teda. And then he's zeichet then he's to enter into the high academy of learning Teda. But he won't understand it. That's why we have the concept of Talmide Biyode. That understanding it, when you learn before, it trains you that later you'll be able to appreciate it. So how does Rabbi Elizabeth and Adai appreciate and is able to absorb the Ziziv uh, Ashkina? So it says that the Nisham of Rabbi Yechen and ben, of, of Rabbi Yechen and Kain Gadol entered into Rabbi Elizabeth and Adai. Because all the work Rabbi Yechen and Kain Gadol did also is not to waste. So there's the concept where a neshama can go from one person to another. Just giving an example. So there's the idea, that that's the idea that he says, that um, that, that, uh, that uh, the, read, read the Loshan again. That he can have the concept that, uh, that a, some tzaddik, since he does not a tzaddik on his own, this person, so it has to come from somewhere. So the Ebishtu would take from another tzaddik and give it b'china sibur. It doesn't mean he removes it from the other tzaddik. It means it extends over to him. And that's what adds this and dimension. So he has now a shtikl, so to speak, a piece of the tzaddik within him. The Semach Tzaddik actually in his notes on Tanya brings... From Shifche Arizal, he says, B'maisa Shekom, that Darizal, a story that Darizal once rose before the Mechaber of Medr Shmuel, he stood up for him, gave him honor. Why? Shenislabers by Nishmas Rabbi Pinchas ben Yoyer. Because he sensed that in him had the Nisham of Rabbi Pinchas ben Yoyer. So this concept is, is common in Kabbalah how a neshama of one person can enter another person in later generations and other forms and faith. So there's the way it does a Gilgal. A Gilgal is a complete reincarnation, meaning a neshama from one person went into another person. Ibur is not the complete neshama went in. It's like he says, the ruach, chines ruach, which most likely means that it's a, an extension of the neshama. It's not the neshama shabba neshama or the etzema neshama. It's a ruach, a spirit of it. We have the concept also in Tanya later, for example, when you say that there's a Moshe within each one of us. We're not Moshe, but there's a level of Moshe within each person. Because Neshamas are not so black and white. And Neshamas can encompass within it many different dimensions. So that's what he's adding now, that Momaila is given to him this level of Atzadik. So in addition to number one, the effort we made. In addition to number two, how it changed your personality. Now we have number three, that actual, the, the, the Ibur of Atzadi can enter into the person. And then he's Mekayim to the point that he's Lavad Hashem Besimcha Mitis. And also despises the negative in the fullest sense of the word. And now he's really fulfilling it completely because he actually got the Nisham of Atzadi. But this was not directly through his, his effort in turn stimulated something above that brought him down that level of neshama. And we'll stop here. The end of chapter 14. Everyone have a good tavoch. TanyaApplied.com is where you can find this and all previous programs. Aksiva v'chsima teva. A good giben shtyar, being that this is the last week before, this is the last class before Rosh Hashanah. So everyone should have a very a good, uh, actually, no, it's not the last class before Rosh Hashanah. There'll be one more. Right before Rosh Hashanah, Thursday night will be the next class. Everyone have a good bench to your next year. This has been My Life Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson. Please join us again next week. Visit chasidasapplied.com for archived classes and more resources.